So I remember um, kind of a day in my summer, I would have to switch off between going to practice for swim and going to practice for running. I mean, I had to wake up at like earlier than I would for school <laughs> every day in summer. I would wake up at 7 a.m., go to swim, do a pretty hard practice, then I would like ride my bike home <laughs> and then I would like take a little break, eat, and then I would go on my run <laughs> and then I would go bike to weights. <laughs> and then if I wanted to, I like biked longer for like longer in between. Okay, so after state, it was really exciting. Finishing the state meet felt really good, like the race itself. We knew we had performed really well. It was just a matter of like, how did we compare to everyone else? I wasn't exactly sure if it was possible for us to make it to nationals because it seemed like a huge deal. I was really excited, especially when I heard about the potential to be at NXN. It was like, oh my gosh, okay, now what? Everyone was kind of hopeful that we would make it and everyone was like crossing their fingers, but we were like, oh, um, like we don't want to talk about it. I was just kind of telling myself like, calm down. It's not necessarily going to happen. I was trying not to jinx it. Everyone was kind of trying to get their mind off of it in a way. Like Ellie and I were like trying to play music. They were all just waiting for that phone call. I know myself, I was just sitting there in the back. I was like, are they going to call? Are they not going to call? When are they going to call? They're like, oh my gosh, like how are we even going to know? Everyone wanted to know like as soon as possible what was going to happen. We had no idea and and Chuck and Andy were like, no, they're gonna they're gonna like call us up. And we were like, when are we gonna get that call? Like suspense. <laughs> McKenna sent a photo to the group chat and was like, hey I don't know if this is official or not, but these are some like something that was posted by Dystat. And we had a FaceTime with Ellie, Caroline, everyone. And Ellie was like, oh, I'm like, we did it, we did it. <laughs> McKenna was like, are you sure? Like, <laughs> are you positive? And then we each like got the call from Chuck saying we did it and what we're gonna, like, what our sizes are gonna be like for all the gear and merch. So the whole process of going to Portland and um, Oregon was really cool for me because this was kind of technically my like first time going on a plane. I packed for like three hours with my mom's help and then um, I didn't fall asleep very well or very quickly that night because I was very excited. I was thinking about all the opportunities. I luckily did all my packing after awards night so I didn't have to get up too early. I think I got up at maybe 4.30 or 5. Woke up at 5 a.m. and we all like carpooled with, I'm, with Ellie and um, Andy. And I was like, oh my gosh guys, this is the first time you have to prepare me. I'm gonna go on a plane for the first time. 5.30 we drive to Oakland Airport since it was Shay's first flight, everyone was like, I want to sit next to her, I want to sit next to her, and we really wanted her to have like 
the window seat and the whole experience, even though we we're just flying southwest. <laughs> the like launch off, that was really scary. I was kind of freaking out. It was definitely really surreal because most of the time you go on like flights with your family or you're going to like visit people, but this time we were going for a race and it just felt really professional and exciting because it's such a big deal to get to have this experience and getting to go with everyone who's been working with you for the past like months is just so special. Just a little recap of what's happened up to this point today. Uh, we flew from Oakland Airport to Portland, Oregon Airport. Traveled to the hotel, checked in, ate some food, and we are on the bus to go to the Nike headquarters. And we're gonna have a short tour, and then we're gonna go on a little run, and then finish hopefully at the track and get some stretch. showed up at the Nike campus. I mean, it was really cool and exciting, but it was also really stressful. It was like, well, aren't we gonna like prepare for other stuff? I don't know, it was like interesting because it was like, okay, we're gonna give you a tour. Like, and we're like, okay, like, but the tour was like barely anything. It was cool, we walked inside, we saw all this like Nike stuff. I mean, I don't know, it was a bunch of Nike stuff. where we can have some extra time, roughly 10, 15 minutes extra time. You can just stand there if you're happy with 2.8, or you can keep running if you want to get to maybe four. We're gonna to run around the campus and see all of the different facilities they had. And one of the coolest things we got to do was see the outdoor track, which has like been one of my dreams to see when I, ever I started running. It's really pretty. Um, but they had a very rushed schedule. They only gave us like 30 minutes to run and usually we would do a 40 minute run and then like maybe five 500s, but we wound up doing 30 minutes and getting in maybe two or three 500s. It was definitely a lot of things right in your face, just all of the distractions, the banners, the lights, the food, everything was just coming sort of right at you. But I think the workout was pretty good as in we got some time to just be in our squad of seven and just work through those laps. Uh, we were doing 500s on the track after a shakeout run. And I think that was really helpful into getting us back into the mindset of like, we're here to focus, we're here to do some work, we're not only here for all of the pretty flagging. Very nice. The track was really nice. It had a fort, like some bushes and some trees in the middle, and it was just sort of in the middle of the forest itself. And I, I kind of liked that. Doing the 500s on the track in the middle of the forest 
was definitely really fun. A little distracting too, because we were just all looking around at everything to see. Um, but it was definitely really cool because there's so many amazing athletes that have gotten to train on this track, and now it's our turn to run on it. So it was definitely really um, such a great experience. All the guys in the orange jackets. Hey coach, thank you. just like a big party for Nike type thing and a lot of the schools were like just going there for fun and but and I remember we went in our hotel room and we really we had our meeting I was definitely overwhelmed a little bit because there was just so many activities and so much um, stuff to do so I was very um, it was an exciting feeling but there was also just a lot of emotions that I was feeling so many like yeah, um, distractions going on. Your social battery could be done by the end of the morning. There was just so many things going on, so much to see, so much to do. It was kind of just like a big party. We decided to have a team meeting to just kind of decide, do we want to have fun with this or do we want to like go for it? Are we going to let ourselves just go out and have fun with the race and not be worried about like focusing and being competitive or are we going to go out and like legitimize our national rankings. If we didn't have that moment to just step back and see the bigger picture, I think we would have been a little bit disorganized, a little bit too overwhelmed with everything that was going on, and we wouldn't have necessarily focused enough on the race itself. To have this opportunity, you know, most teams, no matter what, they end at the state meet, and that's just it, and they have to live with it. You know, we had a great state meet, but we can run even better. We've got this opportunity. Why not take it? Coach Megan's fired up. Oh yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> Running, sprinting around that and course. Here we go. Go. Yeah, just, just mid keep in mind. Yeah, so, like yeah. all the all the other we teams like Morocco. All the other teams like posed. We got to practice, and Andy's like, "We're taking a photo of <laughs> run." We like pull up off the comment. <laughs> okay, but it would have been so much better with the comments. Like, really this is really good. I always shower before a meal. I always shower before a meal. So anyway, I'm gonna go shower <laughs> now. I'm gonna go shower now. We're on the bus. Thank you. Yeah, my Ready to run. Guys. Yeah. It's cold. Yeah. 
So going to the athlete village for the first time was really cool. Um, we, we entered this huge kind of um, like almost like tent thing. I don't know. I thought it was kind of a big tent looking thing. And we each had our own like cubbies type thing. Um, and it said it was really cool because we were like, oh my gosh, it says Moraga on it. Like that's so cool. And we entered in our little cubby and we each got a backpack with all of our gear and stuff in it. That was really exciting. They were all hyped up. We saw the gear, we were trying it on and we were like, oh wow, this looks amazing. Like all the arm sleeves and everything. And I think everyone was just super excited not only to get this huge amount of free stuff, but just to also be here and be trying this stuff on, be racing. It was huge and there's so many teams and getting to open up our like curtain and see our bags with our names on them and getting all our personalized stuff was just so surreal. It was crazy to see that we got shoes and our jerseys. I think that was what we were most excited for. We were a little disappointed when it wasn't the color jersey like we wanted. We just got a white one because we were at large qualifiers, but it was still super exciting. super confusing having the course run through because we sat in the very very back and sitting I couldn't see anything so I just stood up and but still it was really kind of confusing just to see all the loops and oh you're gonna and they had all the different names for the loops and then we came up with our own names for the loops and that just made it even more confusing and then when we got out onto the actual course with Megan I think we took a wrong turn and we didn't do the very back loop, the long one, and we just ran the course like one and a half times. That's what we ended up doing because we just missed, missed the turn completely. confusing because there's so many people all around doing their own thing and we were not familiar with the course at all and there's also so much flagging in random spots because um, there's flagging for the athletes and then one for the like car to go through and when we were in the athlete village they tried to explain the course to us but it really did not help because they had the most random terms for the different loops, like the lollipop and I don't even know what else. But we wound up getting lost a couple times on our run through, but we knew it was gonna be okay since there were so many athletes in the race. Pretty much everyone was gonna have someone to follow. What was the mileage for the day? Oh, 3.5. There was right behind for me. <laughs> <laughs> Like for like 
like skin. I don't have that. We all we all got like gussied up <laughs> in <laughs> in the uniforms and everything because we were like, oh, like everyone else is like taking like professional pictures with each other and like having like their their like whole like profile and everything. It was like, oh, we should go do that too. So we went down and the line was so big. Like uh, we waited, I don't know how long we waited there, but after a while I was just like, uh, it's not worth it. Like, let's just not do it. And we ended up just taking like a bunch of pictures. Friday night um, was a very nerve-wracking experience for me. All the girls came to our hotel room, which was very small. There were only like two beds for four girls. So uh, we kind of had to work through that, but we um, braided each other's hair. We kind of had some music going. We um, got our spikes ready. We got our bibs on our jerseys. It was like a big, like shot putting in this um, spikes for our shoes that were a half inch long and putting on our chips and the bibs it was kind of like wow this is really happening like we've got to be ready for tomorrow morning we get to Glenavere Golf Course. We get off the bus and a huge gust of icy wind hits us all in the face and we all start freezing and I was like I should have brought an extra layer because it was super cold, colder than it was on Friday and to add on it was really windy um, and so as we were running our warm-up I remember Chuck coming up to us and being like, why aren't half of you in hats? Where are your hats? Walking into the athlete village on race day was definitely a complete different mood than the day before. All the excitement for opening up our gear was like gone. Everyone was really focused for their race. Um, it was definitely a little intimidating to see the other teams there, you know, you know you're racing against some of the best of the best in the country. So um, you got to see everyone like rolling out, people with their headphones in. There's some very different exercises from what we're used to seeing. We went inside the athlete village and we kind of sat in the little um, curtain room thing we had um, and we were all very quiet like we were sitting there and it was silent um, and then we kind of realized like we were taking it a little too seriously we needed to kind of have more fun with it so we talked about the race and what we wanted to achieve and just to have fun and I think that little chat that we had before warming up and before the race really helped me kind of um, break the nerves that I was feeling and just kind of have fun with the whole experience. Hey, welcome to Nike Cross Nationals. It was freezing cold, winds like crazy. Um, we were all bundled up in our um, racing gear and just like jackets and every and <laughs> Chuck was all making us wear hats. Hey, we need no. 
Mex, Maraga, Los Altos, Colves. Those three teams, they do it up. I saw a huge amount of cameras and I realized that it was being the race was being streamed everywhere nationwide. And I honestly I tried to not think about it that much. I tried to focus on the familiar faces I saw of Campolindo parents um, watching us and cheering for us. CIF State Division III. They're led by Ellie Buckley, who is third at Cal State behind Hannah Thompson, who we just uh, spoke or uh, saw. She's a 10 3600 meter uh, lady, and there are two seniors in the top seven for Camp Alindo, so they have a great shot at being somebody we see next year here again in 2020. And it was very cold, but it was really. Um so cool to be announced and hear everyone's names and run through the finish line knowing that we earned the spot. But then we had to keep going with warm-ups. By the time we got to the start line, everyone was feeling warmed up and ready to go. I was feeling good. I wasn't I wasn't feeling nerves anymore. It was just all excitement. I wasn't really thinking that much about it. It was just like I'm here, like I'm here to race. Um, like I deserve to be here just as much as everybody else. We see everyone and it's this is a big deal. Like we're getting on our spikes. It's like don't get spites, like here we go. Uh, we did our strides um, and it felt pretty good. We were all freezing. This is for everyone, you know, this is not just, this is for everyone on the team. People are watching us. It was a really good feeling. And we also were ready to have fun. Like I was ready to have fun in the race. Towing the line, I remember I was lacing up my spikes and then I cut myself two minutes before the gun, so I had this cut all on my leg. Um, it was bleeding, but I didn't want to make a big deal about it because it was like two minutes before the race. cross-country runners at the end of a very long but very successful cross-country campaign with one title left for the taking. Freezing but ready to run for a title. NXN 2022 is out on the course. I definitely had an aggressive start. Um, it was probably too much. I went out. Um, a bit hard. This is the first time everyone was together, like everyone was kind of going together in the race. People were kind of pushing and shoving, so I definitely went out too hard. <laughs> when I, my mom showed me a video of the start, and I was like leading last place. I was fifth to last at the start, and I was convinced I was at least in the middle of the pack, but that just goes to show how incredible all the girls we were racing with are. Well, 
our Y staff to also give us a Nike gave a lot of um, a lot of teams, I think, uh, white jerseys and uh, the little orange um, arm sleeves. So it was really difficult finding my teammates throughout the crowd. But I think what helped was our ribbons that the parents gave us and our red hair. So I was actually not looking for the jerseys as I usually do, but I was looking at all the heads and I was just trying to um, figure out where. Some people, like I was racing near Rachel at some point, I was racing near Sloan at some point. I was just trying to keep with them. And although we weren't necessarily in a tight pack as we usually are for races, I think it, it definitely helped me out there on the course to sometimes see a little bit of red hair and be like, oh, that's my teammate. what our sport is all about. It's great when you run away from people, but the higher and higher level you get to, that's not always the case. You've got to learn to meet people, be comfortable with other athletes, finished the race and we all found each other and there was definitely a lot going on. There's people on the ground, there's people throwing off in the corner, there's teams huddled together, everyone's trying to get photos with each other, we're trying to get back to the athletes village to warm up, but we were all just kind of like, oh my gosh, like how did we do in this race? Because Ellie and Shay placed really well, they both had really amazing races. We were hoping to have done well and we were hearing that maybe we placed top 15. I like couldn't feel anything. I couldn't feel my legs. I couldn't feel my hands. I couldn't feel my face. It was kind of like full circle moment like excited I guess. I wasn't even like thinking about like me hurting. I was like well I just it's my last cross country race. Um, I'm gonna do everything I can to get past that line. And I wasn't, you know, dying. Like I felt like I had something in me. And this is like the first race where I was like, okay, like I'm gonna kick. Like, and I kind of kicked. So that was exciting. We are 13th officially. Okay, well, officially we're 13th, which is Taylor Swift's special number. So, you know, I feel like that's really like it's meant to be.
ranked like, what it, like 18th before and we got 13th, like that, that was amazing. Having this tremendous finish, moving up five places from our ranking was really exceptional. Wow, we just did that and we really showed everyone what our team was capable of, which was really incredible. And I was just really grateful for all the memories I got to make with my teammates because this is such a special group of girls. We're like really like a family. So this experience has definitely like has been an eye opener for me. Um, in many ways, it's like, wow, if we did that this year, maybe we could do it next year. It just makes me more motivated for this track season, summer, cross country, like it all adds up, everything adds up. And I'm really excited to see what we can do next year.